What's up, Wilmack Nostalgia? Dave here with a review of Tyler the Creator's seventh album, Chromacopia. After Tyler said he wasn't releasing new music this year, of course, he pretty quickly began a rollout for this album after previously playing Coachella earlier this year. Did a listening event for this at the brand new Intuit Dome in Los Angeles and intentionally did a Monday release drop. And this was not like a Kanye album got delayed. I finally got it out to everyone on Monday release. No, this was by design out on Monday, interestingly enough. And of course, no matter what Tyler does, especially musically, it's going to be incredibly worthwhile and get a ton of attention. Tyler boasts that he's the biggest L.A. rapper after Kendrick these days. And honestly, he's probably correct. Tyler has become such a massive force as a multi-talented, multi-hyphenate creator. And even when he's in between album cycles, between his you know work in the fashion sphere with the golf brand and his association with other cultural figures like his idol Pharrell or Gerard Carmichael with the viral bits from Gerard's show uh, more recently, Tyler's always around. But when we finally get the music, you know it's going to be worth tuning in for because Tyler always gives us something that is a fully formed piece of art, whether that's ultimately for good or bad there's always a lot of intention with his work tyler the creator's seventh album chromacopia is a impressive wide-ranging yet at times hard to grasp album some of tyler's most personal and introspective lyrics are on this album he's very self-aware at times sonically the album is very scattershot often over the course of an entire song there's just so many ideas coming in and they're being thrown at you fast and furious sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't this is not new to the tyler listening experience musically this album reminds me of some of tyler's earlier work even if thematically the album is very much in line with where he's been post flower boy if i had to boil this down this is tyler almost continuing the rapping structure that he did on call me if you get lost and really bring it into the more rap rock you know production sensibilities that he's developed more recently there are certainly bangers on chromacopia but i don't know if any of these are high-end tyler bangers of course it's an incredibly high bar with the vast and varied discography that he has to this point nonetheless chromacopia is certainly a worthy work that kind of goes without saying with tyler's intentionality his artistry it's certainly interesting and there's a lot I liked about it, but there also were some songs I just had found a bit hard to grasp. We can start with the first and only to this point single, Noid, which came out like just a week ago. A really noticeable guitar riff on that and the snares pick up. But this is a great example of one of the Chromacopia songs that really changes what it's got going on over the course of the track list. Overall, I like it, though. I think it's a pretty fun song. Track one, St. Chroma, featuring some Daniel Caesar vocals, has this chant like clapping in the beginning tyler kicking us off with some like asmr performance almost and then a pretty i think sticky chorus track two ra ta ta that gets us right off into the banger sphere for sure i mean tyler's just absolutely spitting on this and i think one of my one of my favorite lines on the album but also one of the most viral unsurprisingly me and lionel boyce in drama class my boy can act now it's really odd future all the mother dudes whacked out the biggest out the city after Kenny. That's a fact now. Obviously, shouting out Lionel Boyce, formerly L Boy of Odd Future, now a Emmy nominated actor on FX's The Bear, as we know. And then, you know, kind of acknowledging Odd Future and his former crew and colleagues and how not all of them are as successful as Frank and Earl. And we'll leave it at that. And of course, the Kenny. A boast about Kendrick or uh, Tyler being number two behind Kendrick in LA, which I think is pretty factual. Good bars. I like to hear it. Darling Eye, you have Tizo Touchdown singing, I think fits pretty well, mixing in with Tyler rapping. I like the line from Tyler about uh, kind of being unable to settle down and find the right person, being lonely with his Grammys. Perhaps the best song on the whole album from a writing perspective has to be Hey Jane. This is about a unplanned pregnancy sometime in Tyler's past. Uh, we don't actually know if this is a true story, but it's pretty specific in the way the story is told that I'm inclined to think it is true in some in some fashion. And what I really like about the song, like the first verse, Tyler has, a, I think, a pretty pres uh, a progressive and 
a nice way of viewing what's going on in terms of not being the one that truly dictate the ultimate decision with what what's what should happen in this situation. The line about not really doing much work and then getting to put your last name on the kid, I think kind of brings that home. But then verse two, it's Tyler rapping from the first person perspective of the woman who is newly pregnant. I just like really getting that extra perspective. I think it's a it's a really well done song. Is it a song I necessarily would revisit all that much? Not necessarily. And I think that's perhaps my like soft quote unquote issue with some aspects of chromacopia is like I can appreciate what's going on here even if I'm not necessarily that interested in revisiting it. I like the drums on I Killed You a lot, certainly in the banger camp there. Uh, Judge Judy, kind of a sex jam, fun tempo, the I don't judge Judy uh, wordplay, very amusing. I don't think I've ever heard that before. It sounds obvious, but nonetheless, it worked for me. To this point in the track list, the guests have been, you know, background, like clearly in support, you know, Daniel Caesar, Tizo Touchdown. When the album was first released, the features were not listed in streaming platforms, so they kind of sneak up on you. But when you listen to Sticky, which is, of course, a banger, it's incredibly clear that you got some guests on here. Glorilla popping up, followed by Sexy Red and Lil Wayne. When I first heard Glow on Sticky, I like kind of like jumped out of my seat. I was like, let's go. Short and sweet, all of them, but it's really fun. Of course, the Wayne connection with Tyler dates way back to Smuckers on Cherry Bomb, after all. I quite enjoyed Thought I Was Dead featuring Schoolboy. I think Balloon featuring Dochi, also a nice highlight. Dochi's, again, short but sweet appearance. Like him, I quite enjoyed the guitar solo on that. And yeah, I guess, like, if anything, like, I don't think the album necessarily, like, wraps up in any, like, grand fashion, per se, and there's not, like, some immediate takeaways out of it, the way, of course, Flower Boy kind of dropped like a bomb when that first came out, after all. But, again, Tyler, really intentional, there's a lot of, there's so many switch-ups and instrumentation changes, not to mention, you know, different vocal inflections, and Tyler switching up his rap delivery and doing his singing, bringing in guests, like, there's so much going on with the album that it's hard for me to be too critical even if ultimately I don't think I was really bowled over by the album but again like it speaks to the strength of his his discography I mean the flower boy level up followed immediately by Igor and call me if you get lost like his last three albums are his best three albums eventually that was not going to continue to be the case I do think uh, chromacopia is below the previous three but again that's not a bad thing let me know, what did you think of Tyler Creator's seventh album, Chromacopia? Did you like it more than me? What was your favorite song? For more music reviews, more rap reviews, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.